Good afternoon. Welcome to Facebook. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Uh, we are ready for prayer, a reading of the word. And prayer, if you like. Okay. If not, I can do it. Okay, we're ready. Okay. I'm reading Habakkuk. Second. Um, I guess it's second. Second chapter. It's not second chapter. But, it's, no, it is second chapter. Sorry, it's in the second verse. The Lord says to me, write my answer for me on tablets so that I can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord Heavenly Father, for another day. We thank you for another day for watching over us, keeping us, guiding us, guiding us, and Lord, strengthening us. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word again. Lord, bless Dr. Neal, the words that come out of her mouth, and let it meditate in our ears and our hearts that result in actions. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you once again for joining us. First of all, if we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. If we believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we're justified by our faith. Then it teaches us that we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, Yeshua Jesus, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For out of the heart man believeth, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Uh, Romans 10 and 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Uh, 1 John 1 and 9, If we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, Yeshua Jesus, and in the name of the Rosh Harkosh, which is the Holy Ghost, my Counselor. We finished yesterday, praise God, with the book of Daniel's. Daniel, so yes, uh, this morning, or this afternoon, should I say, I wasn't sure exactly what the Lord wanted me to bring forth today. And I was hearing things in my spirit or thinking about things. So then I ran out, went shopping, came back, cooked, fooling around, and kind of like, I guess, within an hour, he kind of laid on my spirit what I should bring forth. Well, this was back in uh, May when we had our citywide unit today. They had it in Waco, Texas. And I was planning on bringing it forth online because the last few years, that's what I have been done, doing, unit today online. So I said, well, maybe that's what uh, the Lord want me to share. So actually, he brought me back to one of my favorite chapters concerning unity and what unity really is and what unity really is not. So I put this out there on Facebook. Uh, when the Lord give me something, that's, that's what I use. Uh, help me. In other words, you, and when we think of unity, we all need help. We need to help to bring forward. Do whatever we can to unify most of all the body of Christ. And as I said before, when we started Unity Today over 26 years ago, I think it is, it was to bring all people together, uh, believers, unbelievers, everyone that we could to bring them together. And then the Lord had me to start focusing on unity in my word that's what would bring forth complete unity uh that's what would bring forth perfect unity because although we can gather together in numbers 
when we separate, we can go right back and just start doing the same old thing. Uh, we usually do something happen and that cause separation. And so the main thing is for us to be on one accord when it comes to the word of God. And I think John chapter 17 and Galatians 3.28 is perfect chapters to try to unify us in the word of God so we are no who we're speaking of, who's speaking, and what's it speaking about. And so I put this out there on Facebook, help me, because everyone can be partakers of bringing people together, whether they are in Christ or not in Christ, but most important, those who are in Christ, because those who are not in Christ, they have no hope unless they get in Christ because we must be in the race in order to run the race. And so help me, our focus is Galatians 3.28 and John chapter 17. Eternal life is this, just as. Those are some of the focus things we are going to focus on. Eternal life is this, just as. The vision and goal to bring unity to God's people, number one, came from the scriptures. And it's coming from Galatians 3.28 and John chapter 17. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor freeman, neither male nor female, for in union with the Messiah, Yeshua, Christ Jesus, you are all one. Again, that's Galatians 3.28, a reading from the Complete Jewish Bible. When you think of how a person become one, that's why sometimes we miss in union with the Messiah Yeshua, in union with Jesus Christ. That means we must be in him, in that one body. That's what makes us complete, perfect unity when we are all in that one body. But there's some more information that also unify us in the Word of God. Uh, John 17, I'm going to quote these two verses, but our focus chapter is going to be John chapter 17. I pray not only for these, this is Yeshua Jesus, but also for those who will trust, meaning believe, in me because of their Word. So I'm not going to do so much focusing on that now. I'll focus as we go back into the chapter. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are united with me and I with you. I pray that they may be united with us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. That focus chapter and verse are coming from John 17, 17. Through 26 complete Jewish Bible. This is my prayer as well. That we all become one. We speak the same thing. We believe the same thing. We teach the same thing. We have the same mind that's in Yeshua Jesus. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Well, when you think of uh, one mind... Because the Bible speaks of one mind, one judgment. That means in order for us to have one mind, we must have that same mind that's in Yeshua Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Right, Louise? We must have that same mind. And that mind is to be what? Stayed on him. Which means our mind should be stayed on him. Stayed on his word. And so... Many times people say, well, we are Christians or Christians or believers or this or that. But do we have the same mind? That mind that Yeshua Jesus has, he still does, is always to please his father, not to please himself. As we see things happening today, so many people or doing things to maybe please one person or to just please themselves and one person or just to please themselves. Our main focus is to be God pleasers, not man pleasers, not man teasers, but God pleasers. 
I don't know about you, but I love to at least try to please God. Do we always please God? No, but we should try to please God. When I say something, I want to please God. When I do something, I want to please God. When I do something, I feel like I displeased God. I confess and I repent. I do not want to do it again. But many times we do things and we know they're not pleasing or acceptable in God's sight, and but we continue to do that. That's what you call practicing after you have the knowledge when we actually know better. So this chapter is really to focus. When will you put my body back together, says Yeshua Jesus? It was broken for you. My immediately respond was, now, Lord, is in word, spirit, mind, and body. Which means you want to bring people together, but not just in numbers and in body where we all gather together at one meeting place. That's what they are. When we go to church, we are congregating together. Where you go to a party, you're congregating together. So wherever a group of people are, that is a congregation. That's what it is. And so we want to bring people together that's in the body and those who are out of the body. But we are to be like Yeshua Jesus. His main concern, although he died for the world, but his main concern was to keep those whom God had gave him. Well, sometimes people do not understand that. Why? Why his main concern is to keep those whom God has given him. Well, you go to, to the book of Hebrews, I think I quoted yesterday, where he said, the children that my father has given to me, he doesn't want to lose them. Because you common sense should tell anyone you can't lose what you never had. How can I say I lost $50 and I never had it? How can I say I lost my house and I never had a house or I lost my car and I never owned one? No, in order to lose something, you must have it first. And some people do not realize that Jesus is concerned about the whole world, yes. But most of all, number one, he concerned about those whom God has given to him. He do not want to lose those. Which means when God give us children, we don't want to lose them. We want to keep them near us. We want to hold on to them. We do not want to lose what God give to us. If God give you a spouse, you shouldn't want to lose them. You shouldn't want to what? Hold on to them. But you can't hold on to what you never had. So Yeshua can't hold on to the world if he doesn't have the world. He only have those whom his father has given unto him. So unity in my word bring forth perfect, complete union in one. So when we see the word perfect, it's in J. King James Version if you read that. And so it's uh, speak of how we're to be perfect. That's in John 17. How we're to be perfect. That means complete. It doesn't mean you're perfect and you're never going to do anything. That's man's definition, but it's not God's definition. God's definition of perfect is complete, to be mature. Because some people, uh, they love to say, well, I'm not perfect. Making excuses. I'm not perfect or nobody is perfect but God. Well, yeah, sure, Jesus is perfect. The Rush Hakosh Holy Ghost is perfect. David had a perfect heart. Solomon started out with a perfect heart. So which means your heart can be perfect, but your flesh would never be perfect. Come and you tell you that. Because Satan get in your flesh to try to get into your heart. So if he tempted me, he's outside of me, number one. But I can allow him to come where? in me. It's like someone knocking on the door. Let them knock on the door. They outside the door. <clears throat> but anytime you open the door, they're going to quit. Come in. They are free to walk right on in because you what? You open the door to them. And so one people, one blood, people, nation, and tongue, meaning language.
language is. Now, many people, when they see the word tongue in King James, like they spoke in tongues. They spoke in different languages. You just go all the way back to Genesis. And they all spoke one language. And so because they were trying to build this tower up to heaven, the Lord confound their speech. So that's where language just came in. And they couldn't build it anymore because they couldn't understand each other. Now, how many times are we around people and they talking in different language or dialect and we say, oh, I can't understand them. Oh, I wish I could understand them better. Well, they speaking in a different language. And so that's the word, I mean, the word tongue is languages translated into tongue and tongue translated into languages. One, unity, agreement. So when we agree, we're being unified. Because we didn't agree if I said, well, if I said something like, did you know we are to stand with God and be as Yeshua, which always love people, correct people, taught them the right way, command them what they should do and what they should not do. And we all say Yes, that's agreement. But what if someone say, no, we don't want to have to worry about that anymore. When Christ died, he died for everything, and whatever we do, it doesn't matter anymore. But that's not agreement. So why do you think there is so much separation in the body of Christ? We are not united in the word. We Sometimes we're united in the body, which means we congregate together. But when it comes to the spirit, <clears throat> the word of God is spirit. According to Yeshua Jesus, these words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so we're not coming to perfect union in the main thing. And that is the word of God. So now I'm reading, did I finish that? Yeah, I didn't finish. One united agreement, being perfectly, completely joined together in the same purpose. And the same purpose. Well, what is our purpose as believers? We're to build up the house of God. What is our purpose in the Lord Jesus? Whatever he calls us to do, that is our purpose. Purpose. If you look at Moses, how he called Moses to lead Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. That was his purpose. Then here come Joshua. He was supposed to lead them what? Lead them further. That was his what? Purpose. Then you see David, his purpose. Then you see Job. His purpose. Then you see Daniel, his purpose. Everyone had a purpose to complete in God's will, which means God doesn't tell us all. When it comes to obeying his word, he tells us all the same thing. But he doesn't give us all the same assignment, which I, which I mean, uh, what I mean is he doesn't tell all of us to be nurses or to be lawyers or to be teachers or to be household keepers, or even to get married. Like Paul said, if you get married, it's good, but it better not to get married. And so he doesn't give all of us that purpose to do certain things like that. But when it comes to the purpose of his word, we all are to speak the same thing. And we're to have the same mind, same spirit, and same judgment. Amen. So now in John chapter 17, going to be our main focus. I had uh, did some work on it with a lot of references in it. Uh, I even put it in my book where I broke it down. I used so many different references as we went through verses. But I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm really going to focus on John 17 until I get to that word, just as. 
because sometimes those little phrases can make a big difference when it comes to understanding God's word. Just ask. Very small words. Just ask. So we're focused on many scriptures. Just, um, just going to paraphrase it. Just a few words. Just deal with that word. Just ask. As those two words. So in John chapter 17, I am coming out of complete Jewish Bible. After Yeshua, Jesus, had said these things. Now right there, where you see after Yeshua, which is Jesus, had said these things. Well, now if I never read 16, I need to read 16 uh, from one to the last verse and go into after because that means something happened before it says after so after Yeshua had said these things so he had said something before he looked up toward heaven and said that's very important why would he look up toward heaven and say something because his father was in heaven and he was in the earth so that's why after he did certain things and said certain things he looked up toward heaven well right there that let us know we do not always have to as people say when we come together everybody bow your head and pray that's okay but you do not need to bow your head all the time and pray because Yeshua looked up toward heaven. Solomon looked up toward heaven when he prayed. And so it's okay to close your eyes and bow your head. But I always say sometimes if you're really, really sleepy and you feel like you're trying to pray and you can't keep your eyes open, that's a good time to look up toward heaven and what? And pray as we looked at Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day. He didn't stop praying, although he was permitted not to. So after Yeshua had said these things, he looked to up to what heaven had said, Father. Right there, that's a key word. He looked up toward heaven and say, Father. That means he praying to someone. He's not praying to himself. Common sense should let anyone know that. If they're in the spirit. So if he looked up, that meant his father was up. That's why we've been looking at the word, the almighty. The mighty, almighty. Which means he is in the highest heaven. So when he looked up toward heaven and said, Father, the time has come. How many of us know the time is coming for all of us? There's a time come for us to do something. We look at today, and my heart was just heavy after I seen it the rest of the day, where they was waiting for a time when they would, the Supreme Court would make a decision for months and months and months and months, and they could have done it probably in a week. Now, if the time came, and they made a decision this early this morning. So, Father, the time has come. But this time came for a purpose, to glorify him. So he said, glorify your son. Notice, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son. He didn't just say, the time has come, glorify me. He want them to know he was asking his father to glorify his son because he's the son of God. So he says, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son. And then he tell him why. So that the son may glorify you. Other words, Father, glorify me so that I may glorify you. When we glorify God, when we glorify the Son of God, both of them glorify us. And I love to use the word both because some people do not focus on that little word both. And I always say they hated both. 
me and my father. So you'll see both, even in this chapter, you're going to see us. Just as, now this word just as, those two little words are so powerful. And that's why we're going to look at many verses just deal with just as, just a few words. Just as you, just as you, Father. Just as you gave him authority over all mankind. Well, right there, remember, God gave Yeshua authority over all mankind to do whatever he want to do with them. But Yeshua doesn't judge those who are not in his father. His father judged those, but he judged those whom God has given unto him. Just as you gave him authority over all mankind, now he's going to tell us why. So that he might give eternal life to all those whom you has given him. Although this is what he want to do. He want to give eternal life to everyone his father gave unto him. Well, as I'm going back through this today, it reminded me how yesterday I spoke about in the book of Hebrew chapter 1, where he said, the children my father has given unto me. So here we see it again where it says, just as you gave him authority with all mankind so that he might, not that he will, not that he shall, but it might like should. So that, uh, let me go back. The time has come, glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority with all mankind so that he might give eternal life. That's another focused word. Not saved. This has to do with eternal life. They are different if we research it. Eternal life to who? To all those whom you has given him. That's what he want to do. He want to give everyone life eternal that's in him. Because they can't get it if they out of him. But once they are in him, that's why they are not condemned. But what condemn us again, when we disobey, it bring us back under condemnation. It's sad. Verse number three. And I love this because so many people do not get it or understand it. He tell us what eternal life is. That's a focus. Because so many people think saved out of the world, meaning like out of Egypt, that you have eternal life. No, people. Eternal life is what Yeshua tell us it is. Look what he says. Read your own Bible. And eternal life is this. To know you. See? You can be in Christ. But still not know who he is. You could believe on God and not know God. Because it's a difference. Believing something and knowing something. Listen what he said. He says in verse 3, And eternal life is this, to know you. To know you. How can one know God if they do not know the Son? How can someone know the Son when they never knew God? And so we are to get to know God, number one, for God so loved the world, number one. He gave his only and begotten Son that whomsoever believeth continue to believe in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. And so he let us know here again in three, to know you, the one true God. Remember, we've been using scriptures through the book of Daniel and many times before how there are so many gods. So as Moses was a god, many god. Abraham was like the Lord and so forth, but one true. So he make it known that we are to know the one true God. Because Satan is also 
the God of this world. So he said, to, to know you, the one true God, but he got, he's not finished. And mean in addition to what I just said. Not only the one true God and him, that's the son, Yeshua Jesus, and him whom you sent. So that's what eternal life is, according to Yeshua Jesus, is to get to know both of them. To know God the Father and the one that God sent, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. That verse is in uh, John 17, 3. Number four. I glorify you. Well, he didn't glorify himself, right? He didn't say I glorify me. He said I glorify you. I glorify you on earth. How? By just dying on the cross? No. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So, how can we glorify God? Not just starting a race, but finishing the race. So he said he glorified his father by finishing everything, finishing the work you gave me to do. So, will he glorify me if I'm not doing his work that he gave me to do? Nope. How he glorify us? He confessed us before his father. He glorified us. He called our name before his father. Hallelujah. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, father, glorify me. <laughs> Look, I glorify you, father, first. Now, father, Glorify me because I glorify you first. So sometimes we feel like we do not need to glorify God, but we want God to glorify us. No, we need to do first things first. Listen to what he said. Now, Father, glorify me alongside yourself. Give me the same glory I had with you before the world exists. See? He had glory with his father before the beginning of this world. Because the first world was what? Destroyed. So he was always there through the beginning. Is how God even made the world. It's through Yeshua the Messiah. Number six. Remember, those who would follow me, I always say, it's God the Father that made Yeshua Jesus known. It is Yeshua that make his fathers known. Make his father known. How do we know? Verse number six. I made your name known to the people you gave me. Out of the world, they were yours. See? He make his father's name known to the one that his father gave him. And he said, I made your name known to the people you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. I, I didn't just go out there and get them. <laughs> you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Notice he didn't say you gave them to me and they believed your word for a few days. No. See, the key word is kept. Keep. So he says, Oh, I heard somebody talking outside. I didn't know what it was. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. How many of us know that? That that the father gave Yeshua came from the father. Other words, that's why he said they was yours first. You gave them to me. And so it says, now they know that everything you have given me is from you. 
Because the word you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them. That's the key word, and Sheila tells someone to low their voice. I can hear it all the way upstairs. Because the words you gave me, I have given them. So whatever God gave him to say, to speak, he gave those disciples, his followers. That's why he said, because the words you gave me, that's why he said, these words that I speak, they are not my own. You gave them unto me. So because the word you gave me, I have given to them, and they have what? Received them. Now, how many times we, we can give people word, the word of God, and they might say, I believe it, but they do not receive it. Believing one thing and receiving it is something different. We're to believe it, and we receive it. How do we know we receive it because we act on it. If we do not receive it, although we believe it, we won't act on it. So once we receive it, it should have control us because we did receive it. If I say to someone, stop lying, and you said, I know the Lord said I should not lie, but you continue to lie. You believe you should stop, but you really didn't receive it. Because you kept doing it. It said, now they know that everything you have given me is from you. Because the words you gave me have given to them and they have received them. They have really, notice that word, really. Not uh, falsely. They have really come to know that I came from you. How many people have really came to know? They might believe, but how many people really have came to really know that Yahshua came from God? Listen to what he said. They have really come to know that I came from you. And they have come to trust. See, first he said, they have really come to know that I came from you. And they have come to trust that you sent me. In other words, they know something and they're trusting it. See, that's why we're to know something and we're to trust it, right? Verse number nine. I'm praying for them. Notice who he's praying for. He's not praying for the whole world. That's why first things first. Because again, you can't lose what you never had. I'm praying for them. For who? Those whom you gave me those who know, those who have kept your word, and those who what? Listen to what he said. I'm praying for them. The one that knew, the one that kept his word is the one he praying for first. I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world. See, many times, we're so concerned about people in the world and people sitting right in church and we're looking at them, listening to them on their way to hell. But we're, let's get somebody saved. How many people did you get saved last week? What do you mean? How many people did you get saved? You mean how many people were justified by their faith? They believed on God and believed God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, if you ask that question, you should know. They be so justified. But listen what he said. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given to me. Because they are yours. <laughs> they are yours, Father. You gave them to me. Indeed, all I have is yours. All I have is yours. So, if he do not have us, are they, do we belong to God? No. Indeed, all I have is yours. And all you have is mine. And in them, I have been glorified. Notice that. In them, I have been glorified. Now, 
I think it in uh, John chapter 8, I'm not looking at it, but if you study that chapter, I'll bring it forth when the Lord says so, if he says so. When you, when you study that chapter where uh, it says, the runch hakosh, the Holy Ghost had not fell on none of them. Sometimes we do not realize why the Holy Ghost, the Rush Hawkos, did not fall on them. Because they had not glorified him. That's why. How did they glorify him when they confessed who he was? That's why, remember the man when uh, they wanted him to, uh, wanted to know who opened his blind eyes and the mother said, the mother and the father said, he old enough, ask him. And so, uh, they did not glorify him because they were afraid they would be put out of the church because if anybody confessed him, they would be put out of the synagogue. So they didn't glorify him. So that's why the Holy Ghost, the worst heart coach, had not fell on them. And so many people saying the Holy Ghost, uh, they have the Holy Ghost, but they have not glorified him by confessing and believing and knowing who he is. Because you can confess who he is and not know who he is. You can believe who he is, but not know, without a doubt, who he is. That's why he said they have came to know and trust. See, once we know something, we need to trust. If you know that there's a one true God, now you need to trust that one true God. If you know that Yeshua Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the Son of God, that God sent to deliver us out of Egypt, which means the world, now we are to what? Trust that. If you if you believe that he forgave you all your past sin, you are to what? Trust that. Because you, you know that. Now you can what? Trust that. So if you do not know all your past old sins or forgiving you, now say and bring it right back to you. And you will trust that instead of trusting what he said if you confess and repent. If you confess and repent, you will have mercy. So you are to what? You are to believe it. You are to come to know it. And then you are to what? Trust it. That's why the Bible says trust in him with all your hearts and lean not what to your own understanding so he says oh let me see if i went up too far now i am no longer in the world because he was in the world but he left the world we can say i once was worldly but i'm no longer worldly indeed uh, yeah, now I am no, bleh. now I am no longer in the world. They are in the world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father. He didn't say I'm coming to myself, Holy Me. No, I'm coming to you, Holy Father, because notice he said Holy Father, because we have what natural father. That's why he said when you pray, you say what our father because he's my father too holy father guide them by the power of your name guide them by the power of your name now what is that name father some people said that's a title but that's in your mind but he called him what holy father that's why he said when you pray you say what our Father. So he said, Holy Father, God, that by the power of your name, other words, you have a father higher than any other father. You, that's why the Bible says you have many instructors, but you don't have many what? Father. So God is the what? Highest father. God is the original father. So he the father of all of those who are in Yeshua Messiah. In order to stay in Yeshua the Messiah, you must be a follower of Yeshua the Messiah. Not just believe, but trust and obey. Now I'm no longer in the world. They're in the world, but I'm coming to you, Holy Father. God, that by the power of your name, which you have given to me, Father. <laughs> Notice what he called the name you gave him to me. And he says, what? Father. 
so that they may be one just as we are. Think about that. Just as we plur are. So he want us to what? To be one. That means spiritually one. In one body. Because Christ is in God. And we're in Christ. And that's what makes us one as we're in one house. But we have many houses in this earth that we call what? Spiritual houses. But we are not one in the spirit. We are not all of God. Some of us believe one thing. Some of us believe something today. And then we believe something tomorrow. And it may not even be according to God's word. So what makes us one is being unified in the word of God. So that's how we can become perfect, completely one. <clears throat> Listen to what he said. The word as. Let me read that again and then we'll focus on the word as for a few minutes. Now I'm no longer in the world, they're in the world, but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, God, them by the power of your name, which you have given to me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. Notice he used the word may. He didn't say they shall be. That they what? May be. Because may mean is up to us. As. That little word. We're just going to focus on some verses. And you're welcome to study those chapters. Sometimes we say, well, I don't know what to study. study. I want to study my Bible, but I just don't know what to, uh, what to study. For as the Father raises up the dead. Notice. Comparison. He also raised up. For as the Father raises up the dead, that John 5, 21. Even as they honor the Father, even as. The same way if you honor the Father, you are to honor the Son. That's in 5, 23. For as the Father, remember sent me, so I send you. As For as the Father, that's John 5, 23. Said, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. Now, the word as again, as I hear. He's speaking of as he hear, he judges. That's 530. As, as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father. That's John 6, 57. As my Father has taught me. That's John 8, 23. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. That's John 10, 15. Even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. That's John 12 and verse 50. I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, even so I do. That's John 14, 31. Actually, I took that out of my book today. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. That's John 15, 9, which means if we keep his commandment, this is how one can continue in his love. Be one as we are, John 17, 11, that they all may be one as thy father are in me. Now, I love the way he explained it, that we should be able to understand it just in case we do not. That they all may be one. He's going to explain how we can become one. As the Father are in me, God's Spirit was in him. And I in thee, his Spirit was in his Father. That's John 17, 21. That's what make us one. Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, <clears throat> even so send I you. 
that's John 20, 21. And not as it was by one that said it, so is the gift, that's Romans 5, uh, 16, where it says, and now as it was by one that sinned. Well, that taking you back to the first Adam and the second Adam, how the first Adam sinned, but the second Adam, Adam is spiritual, and he did not sin. <clears throat> Why does our Heavenly Father love us? Because we love his son, Yeshua, and believe that Yeshua came out from God, his Father. At that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because you love me. And some people do not realize that's why God continues to love us because we love his son. And we are to love each other. But this one has to do with loving his son. Not only that, let me read the whole verse. The Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed. Notice that. Not only you love me, but you believe. And have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. That's John 16, 26, 28. John 17, uh, 11. Now I'm no longer in the world. They are in the world, but I'm coming to you, Holy Father. God, then by the power of your name, which you have given to me, so that they may be one just as we are. That was the last verse I finished before I went into just as. Now verse 12, John 17. When I was with them, I guided them by the power of your name. Because he would use that in the Father all the time. Your Father. Our Father. He said, When I was with them, I guarded them by the power of your name which you have given to me. Yes, I kept watch over them. And not one of them was destroyed. Except, right there, if you just stop there, no one would be destroyed once they are in Christ Jesus and you miss, except you're missing something. I kept watch over them and not one of them was destroyed except the one meant for destruction because everything is, was done for our learning. So that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Well, remember what happened to Judas. Judas fell. Judas went to his own place. But now, at verse 13, but now I'm coming to you, and I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. Notice, he didn't say my words, did he? Mm-mm. That's why God gave him the words that he spoke. He spoke only what his father told him to spoke, uh, to speak, as we said on yesterday, where they say he was blaspheming, making himself out to God. He said the scripture cannot be broken because the word of God came to him, took you back to Psalm 82. I have given them your words, and the world hates them. Why? Because they do not belong to the world. Do you know people can still be in Yeshua and kind of like, you know, not cutting the tree down until the end, leaving it there that it might bring forth fruit and they will hate us because we are trying to live right and they are just playing with the Lord? Oh yeah. This is what he said. Oops. Yeah, go back up. Okay, but now I'm coming to you and I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have my joy. I think I went up to, went down too far. Let me go back up. Now I'm no longer in the world. They are in the world, but I'm coming to you, Holy Father. God, them by the power of your name, which you have given to me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I guided them by the power of your name, which you have given to me. Yes. I kept watch over them 
and not one of them was destroyed except the one meant for destruction so that the scripture might be fulfilled. And I'm stopping soon. But now I'm coming to you and I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. My joy made complete, perfect in themselves. I have given them your word and the world hates hated them because they are not because they do not belong to the world just as see that go just as again just as my I myself do not belong to the world he belongs to the world he belongs to God I don't ask you to take them out of the world but to protect them from the evil one in other words he praying to his father Remember, he lifts his hand up toward heaven. He's praying to his father. And he says he's not asking God to take them out of the world, but that God would protect protect them from the evil one. We, well, we know the evil one is safe. They do not belong to the world just, just as I do not belong to the world. Because what happened? They came out of the world. Set them apart for holiness. We, we quoted that yesterday with Daniel. Set them apart for holiness by means of the truth. Well, if we're not walking in the truth, how can we say we're being holy? And God has set us apart for holiness, and he tells us by means how? Of the truth. Set them apart for holiness by means of the truth. <clears throat> Your word is true. Remember, let God be true. And every man a liar. Just as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. On their behalf, I'm setting myself apart <clears throat> for holiness. So that they too may be set apart for holiness. How? By means of the truth. Now you see where 20, he said, I pray not. So I'm going to read this verse and then we'll pick up if it be the Lord's will on Sunday. I pray not only for these. Remember earlier he says, I pray not for the world. Remember, that's what he said before. But I pray for those you gave unto me. Now he's going to say, I pray not only for these. But also for those who will trust in me because of their words. So what is he saying here? First, those disciples knew. They trust. They believe. And so he was praying for those who was in him that believed, that knew, and that trust. But now he let us know this is for those who do not trust because of their word. He said, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will trust in me because of their words. Notice what he didn't say. He did not say, I pray not only for these, but those who will be justified by their faith, believing on God and believe that God raised me from the dead. Mm -mm. That's something different. I pray not only for these, but also for those who will trust that me believe in me because of their words. Right there, that showed me how important words are. Words that come out of our mouth. That's why he says he was praying for the, the one that will believe on him through their own words. That means through their own confession. What are you speaking about me? What are you confessing about me? What are you saying about me? What kind of words are coming out of your mouth? Some people do not get that. And then he says, that they may all be one. The one he had, the one he was praying for, the one that might believe on him through their own words, that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, are united, that means in, 
with me and I with you. I pray that they may be unit with us, united with us. So what I'll notice that he, he, he's explaining how him and his father became one and he praying that they may be united with him and his father. That's what us mean. So that the world may believe. What does he want the world to believe? We're out there and we're trying to get people, as we say, saved. But he tell us what he want the world to believe. So that the world may believe that you, God the Father, sent me, Yeshua Jesus. That's what he want the world to know, people. Did they? He didn't want the world to know that God incarnated himself, died for sin, rose himself. No. He don't want the world to know that because it's not scripture. People are deceiving us when they teach that because they don't know the truth. So that's why he have no greater joy than to hear that his children are walking in the truth. That's why he says, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is true. I pray that they may be united with us so that the world may believe that you, God the Father, sent, not came, me. How many of us can really say I know that without a doubt? I believe that. Now I know that. And now I'm trusting that with all my heart and never going to lead to my understanding again. Because Jesus tell us what life eternal is, is to get to know both the Father and His Son. Hallelujah. So we're going to stop there for time's sake because I have not that many verses. We'll see where the Lord take us Sunday after we finish that or maybe leave it for Monday, pay back up on it. Whatever He says, I shall obey. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for joining me. I pray the Word of God was a blessing unto you. I, in case you saw some crazy stuff out there on Facebook, I was trying to get this caption on, and I just, I just hate to let something outdo me, beat me down. So I had worked with it a couple of days, and and I put it out there. I did what they told me to do, and then I looked. There go a white. A, a yellow screen of whatever color I put, but it's dancing, moving around like this. And I go, why is it doing that? And so then I had to pin it, so I took it off. Then they told me to pick some, uh, they told me to uh, do like a video, upload the video, and then how to do it. Well, it got embedded into the video, and that's what I was trying to do. So I only got one done. And then I went back, I looked at what they said do, and then I go, I can't find it anywhere. So I just turn it off. So she was said, once you have caption on, people can use caption themselves. But I want to embed it in the video just in case someone couldn't hear, they would be able to read or whatever. Well, I said, if I, I can't get it, I'm going to just unplug the computer, take it to a computer shop and have them to do it for me. So praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me. I pray the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Study those words as is and continue to study John chapter 17. So when people say one thing, you have the truth to put before them. So can we look at this? Can I share this with you? Well, if you say save, always save is life eternal. Jesus never said that. But what he did say is to get to know both of them, the Father and the Son. Not what you think it is, but what he said that it is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Love you all with the love of Yeshua the Messiah. If you have not confessed Yeshua, repeat after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart. That God raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead. And out of my heart, I am to continue to believe into righteousness. I am to confess my sin when I sin and 
come short of the glory of God because he says, if I confess he faithfully just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you for your word because your word is true. And we're to be sanctified through the truth. So God, I thank you right now that you justify us, you sanctify us through the truth, and Yahshua glorify us because we glorify him. God, I thank you that we could glorify you by saying who you are, and we could glorify your son by confessing who he is, and we can glorify the Rosh HaKosh, our comforter, because you sent the Rosh HaKosh to comfort us. And God, I thank you right now in the name of Yahshua, that anointing that continue to teach us. And God, I thank you for that anointing that teach us the truth that would never lie or deceive us. And God, I bless you for your word. Lord, I bless your people out there today. I say, go before us, make every crooked road straight. And when Satan come in and try to steal the word, Lord, shut the lion's mouth in the name of Yahshua. God, we pray for every nation, oh God, that you would have mercy upon every nation. And oh God, especially this nation, oh God, that is just really, really just falling away. All the hatred and all the, the, the things that are going on in this world today, even between those who claim the name of your dear son. God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sin. Wash our hearts by the blood of Yahshua, but first of all, bring us to repentance, oh God, because we know we need to repent, turn away before we can be forgiven and the blood of Yahshua can cleanse us. So God, I thank you for cleansing of the blood of your dear son. And God, I ask you to bless your people. If anyone is sick among us, God, we ask you to have mercy in the name of Yeshua, because all sickness are not unto death. But God, we know you you can will allow us to get sick, but you also said, I'll take that sickness away and I'll place it on your enemy. But that's for those of us who obey your word. And God, I thank you right now and give you praise and honor in the name of your holy son, Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining me. I pray the blessing of the Lord will rest upon you tonight. Hallelujah.